Today I'm going to show you how I did this viral AI reality blend type effect. This is not the typical video that I do, but I figured I had some extra information and it's not too complicated to do. We're gonna take this clip from what I do normally do, Travel Adventure FPV. I wanted the boat and the bridge to be like the main focus. I knew I wanted to turn the water into something crazy. What I did was I took a screen grab from it and then I go to Runway AI, use Chrome, doesn't work on Safari. Boom, Runway, log in do all the things. See this gen one down here? That's what we're gonna wanna use to turn our video into AI, but first we need to create a reference frame. And that's why we took that photo. So to get the reference frame, we're gonna go to image to image, and then we're gonna drag and drop our image. Keep in mind that this does cost credits. You can, I believe, do image to image for free, and you can do the video to video for free, but it's like stuttery. It's like, it's a little bit more like animation style. You could probably use it, it's lower res. Keep in mind this does cost a little bit, a little bit of money. So I typed in, I forgot what the exact prompt was. It was something like manga art style. You just kind of want to mix around and try different words. I'm not great at prompting AI, but I was able to get something that I was satisfied with. Something like, you know, it's kind of cool. That'd be hard to blend with reality, right? I mean, I'll just try it again, see what happens. And this is literally AI is just like, toying around with it, trying different things, different words, different phrases, until you get something you like. I don't like, I don't think realistic is helping. Vibrant colors, let's try that. Basically with AI, there's a ton of stuff that you just are not gonna like. So it's like really knowing that you're gonna like, like that's way, that is crazy. I don't even know what that is. I think I added the word watercolor. So after experimenting for a bit, I was able to get something like this and then you can export that. So once you have your reference frame, you go back to the homepage, click on Gen 1. Once you upload the video, you can do image, you can do some presets that they have, and you can do a text prompt. I chose to do the image with the watercolor, and I went to advanced settings, and to keep it consistent, as consistent as I could, I just blasted that all the way up to two. I left structural consistency around two, you can mess around. These two are honestly, just mix around with it until you find something you like. Instead of wasting all your credits and like rendering out hours of video footage, what you could do is just preview the styles and it gives you like four options of what it could look like. So yeah, it's getting similar results to what I was doing before. And then you could again, slide this up, slide this down, see what you like. You can just create more in the same style and then have it load more. The final one that I ended up using was this. I think it started out weird because the reference frame was in the middle, but either way, I knew I wanted to just use it for the water at the beginning. And now, let me show you how I turn that into a reality blend type deal. I'm just gonna turn off all the layers. I knew right around the bridge is where I wanted AI to actually take over because that's where it started to look really good. So what I did was I just keyframed an opacity. And then in the beginning, I wanted to, to flicker with the water because I wanted the viewer to see it being AI and start to transition. So an ultra key, I just keyed out the, the water here. The luma key, I added keyframes and just made it kind of fade in from the sky because I wanted to be able to control those separately. And then at the end, it's all just gonna fade to black and then reveal the AI. In order to not just have this glowing AI crazy, it doesn't look that great because it's just too much up front, I added a second layer. So the second layer is straight up the same thing, but it just fades to black, just 100 literally linear keyframes to, to zero. It basically hides the AI a little bit longer, kind of bleeds it in. And then you just have the AI under it. I added a little Gaussian blur for the water to help smooth it in. Warp stabilizer, because it was kind of jittery. This is important if you want it to be smooth. It's kind of hard to get them like smoother, right? So this clip is normally about this long. And what happens is there are repeated frames. So this literally looks the same. I'm going back and forth. So I cut out all those repeated frames and shortened it into this. So it literally just flows better. Then I nested that all up. I added 
a transform to the end just for retention, basically. This also helps kind of sell this cartoon AI effect. It's called Unsharp Mask. I normally use this to, to make things look really sharp on Instagram, and I didn't really have to add too much of it, only 75. That is without, looks like a little dull, and then that's with. Maybe subtle, I don't know. Definitely helps sell the effect though, and keeps the sharpness for Instagram. And then you could turn this up as much as you want. Like you can make it actually absurd looking. I didn't want it like that. I want it to be kind of real. So I left it down. Then you just add your LUTs and your sound design and then you're left with something like this. About to drop a drone adventure boy in Europe series. This clip is actually stemmed from that series in Europe where I just tour around the most insane spots with my FPV drone camera and other gear. Oh, I moved to Bali. I'm in Bali right now, so expect a lot of Southeast Asia content. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure to subscribe, check me out, and I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye. <laughs>